Hello and welcome back <laughs> to the GSL Code A. It's Tasters and Artosis again. Yes. And we're very excited always. to be down here. Always. And forever. Well, not always. Most of the time. Yeah. We can at least say that. Most of the time. Most of the time. Um, here we are. All right. It's yeah. Wednesday. Time for another Code A. The real StarCraft of Korea really gets going this week, right? I think we have Pro League starting up this weekend. That's right. We have two Code A days. We have SSL tomorrow. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have nothing to do for the next few mornings, <laughs> afternoons, <laughs> nights, whenever it is that you would normally tune into this. They have everything to do, which is watch StarCraft. That's right. I meant no other non-StarCraft stuff. Yeah. A.K.A. a waste of time. Yeah. Who cares? You have children. Eh, they eh, can, they can they'll wait. be fine. Just open up They're a box of Cheerios, to stay alive, give it to them. Okay? Yeah. They're going to they're gonna be fine. You throw it in the snow, it would be fine. Your classes. Eh. We never finished college, and we turned out to get a TV show, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, your job. Eh, money. GSL. Hold on, hold on. Subs at GSL. GSL aren't that expensive, so. It's free for high quality. You don't need a job. Yeah, that's Clearly. right. You can be like a Protoss and just get you your energy from us. You can be in some us. parking lot stealing Starbucks' Wi-Fi and still watch this. Yeah, so that's you true. really don't need anything else but GSL. Mm -hmm. And there we are. You guys will be watching we a lot of StarCraft it. over the we next five it. days or so. Yeah. And it will be a lot of fun, I promise. That's right. Now, today. Tonight. Tonight. Today for some people. This morning for some people. Yesterday for some people. That's right. <laughs> people all over the world. Definitely right not now, yesterday for right anybody. Here, we are going to be beginning uh, three, I think, probably very close best of fives. It's a yeah. tough call for any of these. I think... All three matches look pretty good on paper, like uh, sure. who's going to end up winning them. I think actually the first one is easiest to call, Patience against Symbol. Who do you think uh, takes it? I definitely go with Patience on this one. I okay. think he's uh, one of the stronger Protosses that we have. But I'm, I'm always a little bit reluctant to count Symbol out, but I might be. I have this thing I was where for I, get, a long time. I get a little bit biased when I've passed them too many times, and I'm yeah. like, no, they're never going to go away. He should admit it. He's biased. He's, he's a biased caster. He's biased. Only the old boys club the players. The old boys, the Illuminati of esports are biased against these old players. So, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, I think Symbol could take it, but I think you're probably right. Like, Patience, I expect at patience. least in the current state of the game, we should be seeing Patience probably move on. Uh, I'm thinking 3-0 or 3-1 probably, but... Uh, you know, Ryung Solki, I think that's a pretty good match. Ryung's in good shape lately, and Solki, yeah. when is he not? Uh, and then Jokchi versus Young Chick. I guess we can talk more about that when we get there. But uh, gonna gonna be a good night, guys. Spread the word. Let your friends know. Tell them to join us. The knock. greatest show for the greatest game is on. Knock knock. Who's there? GSL Code A. Yeah, Whoa! that's right. Tell our people to tune in here. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're just getting back into the rhythm of the second half of StarCraft 2. Talking about WCS points, talking about GSL here in Korea. And uh, now that we've had the bones of the meta form here mm -hmm. in Legacy of the Void, it, it's going to be pretty cool to see how the competition actually turns out. Yeah, I'm, this I'm super around. excited about this season, right? Like, I think the game is already in a pretty good spot, and we're going to like learn more and more about the meta as Code A and then Code S goes forward, and of course the rest of Korean StarCraft as well. Yeah. This is like a treasure trove if you want to really understand what's going on at the top level of StarCraft 2. So, um, tonight is going to be fun. Patience is definitely an upcoming player. He, he's very good. I wouldn't say he's on the best team in the world. No offense to the Africa Freaks. But I think that definitely he's somebody. This is uh, where Mr. Che presses the button and then my drops heart you stops in the beating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did the Africa Freaks. The collar Freaks. in your neck explodes. <laughs> it's like that stuff. What is that thing they had to wear in, uh, what's that movie? That Battlefield Earth? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah those collars were they like. You were in roles. that movie, actually. Yeah, I was John Travolta. Yeah. Also known as we the gave you dreads, you look the same. Yeah. You know, I've been getting that my whole life, the John Travolta thing. I know. When I was and skinny, he's been when I was that skinnier, too. it was I was John Travolta in Greece, and as I got fatter, it was like, oh, you're like John Travolta from Ladder 49. So, <laughs> I was you know, every, say, every iteration of the guy. <laughs> I was going to say John Travolta from Scientology, but okay, we can go with Ladder 49. <laughs> that works, too. That works, too. So our map lineup tonight, GSL Rocks here, Frozen Temple, Dust Towers, Frost, and King Sejong Station. Yep, uh, kind of neat that we're opening up with GSL Rax here. I wasn't really expecting that one. Uh, looks like that was actually a patience pickup as far as the map went. Kind of makes sense. 
a little bit difficult for Zerg to deal with certain aspects of how small that map can be and the rocks in between the, the second and third bases. Yeah, they got a lot more uh, problems they got to they gotta iron out before they can really start to enjoy themselves yeah. on that map. So uh, we're going to jump right into this. Again, guys, tell your friends to join us here at the GSL. This is already sizing up to be a great season of Code A, and it's only going to be better and better as we jump into Code S and eventually crown a champion. So this is game number one on the map racks here. Symbol versus Patience, Azur versus Protoss to start tonight off here at the GSL Code A. Look out! We zoom right over that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in the bottom right, in the blue, our Zerk player. Africa Prixie. A lot of history with this guy. Um, for a while, he was at the very highest echelon of Zerg. And uh, he's definitely taken a step back from that. And he's done in yeah. the shadows, I'd say, of the other Zerg players here in Korea. Still a good good opponent, tough opponent to go up against in the upper left. All right. Patience. This is, for me, one of the most interesting players in the entire world. There's, like, a few Protosses that I am completely... Uh, like, I just love to watch. By the way, thanks for coming down, guys. Welcome to the studio. Yeah, that was a good little uh, hand pistol there. But, uh, oh, wow, <laughs> that's a very quick gold base. Um, kind of cool to see Symbol do that, pull that out here. But uh, so I want to go over this just real quick. Patience is one of my my Protosses that I'm really interested in. Like, Zest, of course, because he's the best. Hush, because he pushes for the meta but can't win a game. And then <laughs> Patience, because it seems like he has... Maybe the worst micro and decision making out of any top tier player, but he's still so good. So what makes him so good? And I, he's able to power up. I think he's he's really like got great build. He's kind of like a modern day Stork in a few ways. Not ex he, the, he doesn't draw a complete parallel with anyone. Well, but like Stork, his build Stork, orders are great. Uh, his Stork sanded down some of his uh, weaknesses as he eventually climbed to the top. But yeah, yeah. I, I do know what you mean. Where it's like, well, Stork does this one thing so good that it kind of overshadows any faults he has. Now, if we could just talk about this game for a second, because this is already not your normal game. Symbol takes a gold base here uh, in the middle of the map, and it looks like we're going to have an adept pressure here from Patience. Now, I don't know if that was what he planned to do all along, or he saw this expansion and said, mm. wait a minute, all right, I probably should try to punish that. Yeah, this is going to be pretty annoying uh, to deal with if he just kind of makes two gate uh, adepts, right? Because you, you have to be split on two bases. Hmm. I, I gotta ask you this, Artosis. Yes. What, should he have actually not taken that gold base, but the other one? Because the probe, it seems like that's the way the probe always goes. Am I wrong about this? Uh, yeah, it is. But, you know, I think that the gold base is right around the distance where this is still doable. So, like, so it's, it's inconsequential if they see it or not. Like, yeah, I think so. If I guess you it's, just, it's always better if they don't, but yeah. it's not the end of the world if they do. Yeah, like this isn't based on only sneakery. This is based on... Uh, Zerg getting drones at a gold base and being able to produce units non-stop in order to stop anything coming in. And this is a, something we saw as a problem with gold bases in Heart of the Swarm is that when a good Zerg took a base like this, like for instance on, uh, God, what was the name of that really tall map? Uh, you know, I'm actually, Core Hall Precinct or something? Maybe that's not I'm it. I'm pretty bad with map names, to be but, honest. Yeah, well, to be frank, in any game, I've actually always been bad on this. You could ask me, like, the majority of the Bruder maps I had to practice on all the time, and I wouldn't mm. be able to tell you the name of them. Well, I, I can see in my mind. So, guys, imagine this map I see in my mind with the gold base, and, like, there was no way to really punish it. Like, yeah. some players like Classic came up with things like two oracles to just kill all the drones immediately, but uh, it's pretty tough, and it looks like Patience is going for a quick robo here, and I'm not sure exactly what for. If this is an immortal push or something, I don't... I don't think this should work. Let's see what happens here. Uh, looks like the Zealot is going to get caught over here. Um, the Adept, I don't know how much damage that actually took, but he did drive that out. And we actually got a follow-up mm. drop with this, which makes this pretty interesting. You know, yeah. Traditionally, we, we only think of a gold-based snag with Zerg as an attempt to power through the entrance, yeah. or at the, at the bare minimum, deny the third. But I, I suppose you can incorporate this. And this might be too many things to juggle right now for patience, you know? The drop over here in the main, the pressure on the front. Yeah. How, do, how does the Protoss develop out of this? I'm not sure this was the right build order selection here from patience. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting, like, especially with Overlord drops, already research and Overlord speed, that's going to be a real pain in his butt if he wants to do an Immortal push here, which is exactly what he wants to do. Like, if he had gone for a Stargate, sure, he can fend this off a lot easier, but then can he really do damage to the gold base? So this is... 
You know, gold bases are funny like this. It's like... It, it's much easier to figure out how to play as Zerg with gold bases, I guess is a good way to put this. Well, yeah, for sure, because you actually get your bases up quite uh, quickly compared to the other races, so you're able to just kind of get that advantage mm. already and exploit yeah. that. The bursts of drones, the fact that larvae make units and like the units and drones, all these things really factor in a lot. Now, he is going up here and pushing in, but we have a Baneling drop uh, I don't down. think he's actually watching, though. Uh, we did not actually catch to see how many Banelings killed mm -hmm. uh, at that base over there. Drones have been pulled, so oh, a lot of kills, 10, ten kills there. And this uh, attack is going to be fended. Yeah, he doesn't even have a prism with it. Okay, I think Patience might so, be dead. Patience has kind of done every single thing wrong so far this game, unfortunately. Well, I don't know if he's encountered this strat specifically. Um, I don't think this is what he practiced against as much. No, probably not, uh, <laughs> which is kind of interesting as well because Patience chose this map, so obviously he had something planned. And I wonder if it was an immortal push from second one because, look, the normal third base, those yeah. rocks cut him up. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's like, oh, immortal push is rock here. But Symbol took the gold base and completely screwed him up. Well, we have an adept drop coming here, but it seems like everything has been a little bit staggered as far as the progression of which attack should happen. So I'm not sure, actually, uh, if this is going to do that much. Let's see where this army's yeah. placed, because, of course, whenever a drop occurs, we got to see, well, where's his army actually at so we know how much damage yeah. he's done. Like, this, this has to be some sort of miraculous harassment. Like, the fact that he's already lost 14 probes to light harassment, the gold base went completely unpunished. He went for a two-base immortal bust, which did zero. Yeah. Like... I mean, I don't like to call games too early, but this game is, like, super-duper over here. Yeah. Like, well, you know, the symbol has to be terrible to lose from I, here. I also don't like being disingenuous <laughs> to the viewers either, yeah. right? I mean, you look at this, and it's I mean, this code is, like, A's. really <laughs> tough yeah. to recover from, especially with the fact that Zerg has so many options to drop in different locations. Yes, Protoss can use a War Prism, but the War Prism is trackable. Yeah. And if he makes more War Prisms, well, that's less Immortals. That's less of the other uh, units, and... Mm -hmm. Frankly, I think the, the lead that Symbol took early on here is going to be one that's going to allow him to kind of parlay this into a victory later on. Yeah, and oh well, boy. look at this. Oh More boy. banning drops coming in. He does have some stalkers here. Not sure how much damage he's oh, actually going to get careful. done. Cannot afford to lose that. All right, so it gets two kills there, but he's not done yet. If he can actually move this overlord to the right just a little bit, even if uh, he does try to pull the probes out, he's still going to lose a good amount. Ooh. Ouch. Okay, seven kills there. Now he backs this overlord up. Uh, that'll probably be able to escape later on. This is, uh, like, Symbol is just in too good of shape. He's controlling everything. Yeah, we have Glaives on the way, but we don't really even have a Depths out. We don't have the economy that can really support, you know, a, a big prolonged attack. I mean, it's fine for Symbol to not leave the game. It's just, at this point, what is the strategy to beat, you know, a Code S caliber player like Symbol? <laughs> Yeah, that's well. That's the real question. I mean, Symbol here with a lot of momentum early on. I gotta say, Symbol always struck me as more of the brainy player than than a, a Patience. And that's not to say Patience is not bright yeah. or anything, but he just kind of he he can definitely find the strats. I mean, he was doing this for a long time already. He would find the strats that would allow him to get a a leg up on his opponent, mm -hmm. and we're seeing that right here, right now. Now, the rest of the games we have in this series probably will not look like this. Well, definitely not with a quick gold base taken like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Patience has that going for him, but this is a lot of momentum loss here for Patience early on in a series. It is. This is, like, uh, it, it has to hurt because it's his map choice as well, and the fact that he's staying in, like, this is going to, it already should feel kind of helpless, but... That can mess with your mentality as well when you're playing it. Oh, wow, he even had to cancel that gate because the Archon couldn't get through. But, like, this can hurt your mentality staying in a game like this because, like, no matter what he does here, Symbol is going to kill him, right? And that there's something well, to be said I, for, I, like, being like, oh, man, this is you just pummeling me, like. Well, it, it's the tough way to play, you know, in, 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 you know, for instance, in this case, game one of a best of five is that, like, you've lost, but they, have, they can't kill you yet. But, I mean, their options are so limited. Right, and I think this really does come down to Symbol making a mistake and not patience, you know, seeing, uh, you know, a chink in the armor here because I don't think there really is a, a, mm. an exploitable moment as long as Symbol plays a very basic conservative game. When we look at the supplies, it's 122 to 184, and we're getting close to that point in time where the supplies just skyrocket for mm. Zerg. Yeah. Uh, Protoss hasn't quite gotten there yet, in part because his third base isn't done and he hasn't mined enough from it. He only, so, ooh, big Ling attack here. Where is that mothership core? He really needs it at the moment. Oh, God, he's going to get in the front as well. 
Kind of surprised he didn't surround that Archon immediately and kill that mm -hmm. off first. But he has breached over here. Then it looks like he wants to go for as many probes as uh, humanly possible. Taking out a ton. We have 29 kills there on those probes. Now note he escapes this way. He doesn't go into the main. He can uh, use those links to come in again and attack later. Was oh, there man. a drop there? Yeah, I think there it looks was. like a Baneling drop probably hit again as well. Um, you know, the, I was going to say right before that attack happened and wrecked everything again for poor patience that the one redeeming factor is that the drone count is still pretty low. Of course, that happens with a gold base anyways, but... Now, eh. it takes a lot of uh, Banelings to connect here and take out Archons, so a lot of this army is kind of obsolete as far as how it's uh, going to be able to fight this, but I think the mm. sheer numbers will make up for any folly there. So yeah. he's just surrounding uh, anything else you can get over here. We got the Queen still dishing out damage. There it is. Question mark, question mark, or GG. That was the mystery punch out. Huh. All right. Nicely that, done. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, it was a good build by Symbol. I think Patience's original plan he just kept with when he saw the gold base. And the, the first sling drop already wrecked it, his strategy so unbelievably hard, you know? Yeah. That's, that's where I think the... That's where it started to fall apart, but it fell apart everywhere, my friend. Let's see if the next game is a little bit different. Uh, Symbol definitely used the right strat on that map and never allowed Patience to play the game he wanted to play, the game yeah. that he practiced yeah. uh, and prepared for. Uh, and that's a sign of a good player. Now, game number two is on Frozen Temple. This is a vastly different map, and Zergs sometimes have a hard time once they use up uh, the expansions on their quadrant of the map. Mm. How do you push out from there? Sometimes we see Zergs therefore not take this into a long game, try to do some kind of timing. I'm not entirely sure how Symbol's going to approach it, but I, I, I know both players are definitely cognizant uh, you know, of the functions on this map yeah, that yeah. can allow a Protoss player, especially in late game, to take a pretty big advantage. Sure, yeah. There, I mean, there's three different paths, and as Protoss, you can kind of work your way down one and, and kind of spot in the other. So we'll see how he wants to play. Will he go for a macro game here instead of an immortal push? In the bottom right, in the blue, winning game number one, he is. Africa Prix, symbol. In the upper left, in the red, our Protoss player, he is. Africa Prix, Hei So let's pay close attention to the openers here and see what this game is, is setting itself up to look like later mm -hmm. on because you know the, the the style that we saw there from um symbol it's not a new style for zerg minus the bailing drops with the gold base but the, the concept of taking a gold yeah. base that's out there keeping that safe and then really shutting down opportunities when it comes to protoss taking a third base that's been around for a long time um but this map is, again, just functionally different. So mm -hmm. I want to see how their build orders start out and see if there's going to be more opportunity here uh, for patience. And it's also going to be uh, coming down to the adaptability of him seeing what Symbol does because it seemed like in that last game he had no clue how to deal with that uh, strategy at all. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, his build didn't have built-in checking for Overlord Ling Drops. Yeah. And that could be, like, let's not forget, these guys are on the same team. So Symbol might just not really do a lot of early speedling drops. Yeah. Stuff like that, it, we, we have to remember to tell everyone, you know, there there are possibly mind games from two teammates playing against each other going on. and like That's true. Because he didn't have a scouting pylon to see that coming in. He never had a stalker to try to push it away. He never, he never did anything to try to prevent this. Didn't even have a scout for an evolution chamber. So uh, hopefully, yeah, okay. See, he's starting out with a stalker, so already... His builder is going to do better against the, you know, something like a Ling Drop. So let's remember that they, um, they are in cross spawns here. Zerg's got a great distance, uh, you know, between the other player. So that does allow Zerg to be a little bit more comfortable. Um, and we're just going to see as this game continues on how exactly do they decide to play. Hmm. Zerg's most likely for the fourth base going to take the bottom center. And yeah. uh, predictably, the Protoss is going to take this base over here where the Stalker's moving at. We'll oh. see when exactly he decides to do that. But, okay, also spotting this Overlord, pretty important. Yeah, this is absolutely great to open up Stalker. If you can catch one of these Overlords, you're already in the money. So, very nice move, but that means the Lynx can get in here and see that Stargate. Uh, 
I mean, no big surprise with that. Oh, and he misses the Overlord kill. Yeah, 24 HP there, and these Heartbreaker. lanes get in. So unfortunately, even though he damaged that Overlord, this is not enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you damage the Overlord, that doesn't really matter that much unless he's planning on doing some kind of drop strat with that later, yeah. and he catches it later. So kind of uh, a bad situation here for Patience. Yeah, that's it's it's a little bit rough for sure. Uh, he starts the Oracle now. If if Symbol thinks it's Phoenix's thing, he won't. Is he won't, especially that bruised Overlord. Like if you are making a Phoenix, you rally over there instantaneously. Oh, you know yeah. to kill that. You're like, okay, this will take like two oh, shots. Now he got the speed done. Okay, oh, takes that oh, Overlord oh. out because it was bruised. And the Oracle is on the way, so we'll see if he can get any damage done with that. Also making a Forge, plus two gates, wants to take that third base right away now. Zerg uh, continuing to just macro up right now, and we're going to see how prepared he's going to be for this Oracle coming out here. Now there is one probe, as well as this Adept that's going to get caught. If he can get rid of this probe too, and deny this base from being taken, that's uh, one little victory that's pretty good. Meanwhile, the Oracle does come well, in. A yeah. uh, little bit of miscontrol there. Takes out about two drones, three now, but is taking heavy fire here from these queens, barely escaping, only four kills. Yeah, yeah, four kills, you know, that's something you're generally always going to get with an Oracle if you have good micro on it. So a little bit of miscontrol, as you say. How do you feel about the Void Ray being made here? Uh, I'm pretty cool with the Void Ray because the Void Ray, this is like kind of a... a semi-newish thing Protosses are trying yeah, it out. it seems to be pretty trendy, especially in Korea. Yeah, it's, and that's actually not, okay, yeah, there, he's gonna stand using there. I'm like, that's not big enough for a cannon. <laughs> 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 Did he really mess it? No, it's fine. But, uh, you know, it can kill overlords that are trying to come in for drops, so it's very good at deterring Baneling drops, and against any sort of, like, Roach or Ravager all in, uh, a single Void Ray will really, it'll throw a wrench in that plan, for sure. So the Lings are coming back up right now. We have the Robo Base starting. The Banelings Nest about halfway done. Evo Chamber almost completed. Now, there haven't been any Phoenixes made. So you can see Symbol arcing out. He's going to lose that. Oh, mm. man. Um, so you can already see that Symbol is going to make sure that he can survey the map pretty, pretty effectively. And that's one thing. When you do go for that Void Ray right after the Oracle, mm. you can't clean up Overlords or continue the harassment. So kind yeah. of an unfortunate situation. I believe you only got four drones total with the Oracle. Am I yeah, correct about that? Yeah, it might have been and five at that last second. Yeah, but I wasn't it was, watching for that. I but mean, I, I think, it, yeah, I mean, so that's... It's not worth losing an Oracle. Yeah. You need the scouting. Well, ideally, you want to keep that alive for the rest of the game so you can actually start tagging the armies. Mm. Um, now, the Adepts shade in here. They're into the main. But how many workers are they actually going to get? There's already adequate number of Lings. Yeah. And a number, I think actually all these Oracle uh, Adepts, excuse me, are going to be killed off. Looks like one might actually shade away. <laughs> and uh, these Adepts did not do anything, Artosis. No. So Patience is just in a really bad bad spot to start this off and that's that's unfortunate yeah and he's just um, sitting here chilling making adapts like he has no real army at home he has double robo so he can start a mortal production but you know uh, the, the problem sometimes i'm sorry were you, you go finish your thought i was go. just gonna say like it, it's just ling baneling right now right? right so even making immortals doesn't actually do that much against this type of comp but i mean so far i really like symbols position more oh no Oof. okay now notice Symbol's patience here. He does not trigger the drop just yet. He wants to try to get the optimum amount of damage. There's only two Banelings in there. Um, now three Stalkers underneath this. He's going to have to just go ahead and plant that there. That does kill four probes, which is uh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, but I think for the rest like of the an victories Oracle. that Symbol's... <laughs> <laughs> At least this for, game. For the rest of the victories that Symbol's had, though, I mean... I think Symbol's just still in, in better shape. What yeah. I was going to say earlier is, you know, a lot of times you see players keep making only Adepts. They don't end up with a very sophisticated army later on. Yeah. That's yeah. actually one problem is, you know, Adepts are pretty scary, but eventually the Zerg has all the tech they need to kill that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Hydraling, Baneling will kill Adepts. Yeah, Adepts. There's nothing a fancy Adepts can do. You don't shade <laughs> away. They die before they shade away. They're, mm. not, they're not that strong, so... Uh, if you make that many adepts early, if you make more than like a a very small handful of like two, three adepts, yeah, you have to get damage done with them, or you may as well have made zealots. You know, like yeah, the zealots will actually do something when you get that charge upgrade done. But if you're just like shading them in and out, and like they just all die killing a few zerglings, <clears throat> that isn't enough. Like that, all they've basically gotten you there is a bit of scouting intel and told your opponent that you've used a lot of gateway build time on adepts and not on other units. Yeah. 
Excuse at, me. Excuse at me. least this this um, observer is really well placed. I love seeing Protoss. That's like old school putting the observer right there at the ramp in the main. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like this place that an overseer will never go to, and like you can see when you can kind of see the everything. hive starts, which yeah. is like it's it's well, just a really nice also, place. You, you can kind of uh, keep keep tabs on the production because yeah. coming out of the main, you're exactly you know, yeah. You're, they're, they're Every not, time you catch that, you'd be like, okay, it's hydras. If they're making drones and they're being uh, really on top of it, they're not probably making it from the main. They yeah, can, definitely. But, but normally right. their army units are coming out. So you can kind of survey that. Um, lackluster dropping here. I, I'm a little bit surprised to see Symbol actually pushing out with these hydras. Yeah. I'm well, not sure. I think he wants to just start putting pressure on all over the place. Like, he, he, right, he has hydras with some upgrades. He has uh, lings and speed banes. Thing is, this, this army is, does pretty well against well, that, though. The problem is the observer is spotting this. Well, it looks like uh, Protoss is not going to try to engage it. He had the option to maybe try to come down there and, uh, and gun that down. Mm. But... Uh, he's good at pylons. <laughs> I mean, this is really good against Banelings. Each one of those pylons is like a force field. If the Banelings actually roll in, he can just put force fields in between those. That's a very good point, Artosis. And of course, he can make a bunch of cannons as well. But Okay, so this is going to keep a uh, symbol at bay here. Matt Protoss, for a little bit here, was ahead in supply. Zerg's starting to catch up. Um, and, and it also is pretty clear that uh, there's big plans right now for the top center of the map for patience to actually. Uh, expand up here. We have another big attack coming up. I'm kind of surprised to see Symbol attacking in like this. I think it's, it's so futile Yeah. to try to do this. Like when you see that many sentries, come on, and it's stalkers and immortals. Well, so. And the pylons there. And it, I mean, yeah. It's just, and nothing I, about that screams to me gonna that it's going to work. Yeah. And he's like turtling on three bases. Yeah, like exactly. do that if you're hitting a fourth base or something, but the way he was doing that there, oh my god. Whoa, that was bad. Yeah. Well, this is, this is the thing about patience and why I find him so interesting, because he makes a bunch of like I don't want to be mean, but boneheaded moves, and he makes a lot of micro errors. But then he makes an army like this, and he can kill you. Like, <laughs> he's act well, like he's he has potential to kill right now. Well, if you look at the macro between the two of them, Patience has actually stayed uh, in a pretty mm. substantial lead and has spent his money better. I mean, to some extent, he almost should have just left those adepts with his army here, and he'd be even scarier. Oh, yeah. Maybe you should just stop harassing. Now, we've got another <laughs> attack coming in here. Disruptors are being chucked out. Two different sides. Bailings connecting. Ooh. Hydra's being pulled back. I don't see any force fields just yet. As more Bailings come up here, the Immortals are at a high risk of being surrounded here, and they are. What a great flank coming out of Symbol wow. right there. And he's going to pick oh, off every man. Immortal. And losing the Immortals wow. is the easiest the easiest way if you want to read a game for how the battle went if the protoss lose all the immortals that's bad yeah yeah <laughs> that's you know it's a very astute way to say it and the sentries even died there as well it's like all of his important units are dead and he just has stalkers left yeah. over he's trying to go into disruptors off of this uh i mean it's doable you can go stalker disruptor for sure but I gotta say, like it, that was a very scary army, and Symbol dealt with it perfectly with that flank. Without yeah. that flank, if he just tries to attack it head on, he's gonna die. It's funny how it looks, is it wasn't a lot of hydras, it was barely any banelings, yeah. it was a small number of lings, but it did the job. <gasps> oh! Okay, two lurkers could take it out. That's not deterring the push right now, though, mm. uh, from Symbol. Is Symbol overextending though? He's starting to shave through this. Uh, he's, if he does this correctly, he'll be able to isolate the uh, main two bases from the two expansion bases outside. And it looks like he's doing just that. Now, they just these disruptors are literally the only hope right now yeah. of breaking this. Yeah. The, and it, let's keep in mind those are, well, the idea was right, right there. Um, he needs to just gun down these disruptors as quickly as he can with the Hydras. Ooh, bad rally, yeah, though. Yeah, really bad terrible rally. rally. Losing quite a bit there. And look, he's got his disruptors here that if he aims, he's just right. Great disruption balls going down. Problem for Protoss, uh, excuse me, for Zerg here is that Zerg actually can't run away either. There's actually, the, yeah, the stalkers will, get stalkers on top will of that. kill you. You yeah. kind of got to commit when you've got lurkers like this. Now, uh, he's doing some good surrounding. Mm. He's got to keep these uh, lurkers spread out. That was uh, with disruptor shot. As he's continuing to, to, to get this, uh, the, the numbers reduced here, but it's actually about 120 to 110 supplies. So, um, Let's see. Now, Protoss has is, is kind of been reset. Mm -hmm. um, oh, my God. But, oh, that, that's a little bit painful. But you know what? I kind of like the position here of Patience, I do have yeah. to say. like, uh, Even though his army supply is really low and all that, he's got four bases. And Symbol is only mining off four, even though he has the fifth. So economy-wise, he's doing completely fine keeping up. And he's got a lot of disruptors left off with Blink Stalkers, and those two units together make a pretty decent composition. You can hold a lot against that, and he's going right into charge. It's about to finish, and Immortals again. So I think that he's all right as long as he doesn't overextend here. 
Yeah, I think he might be right, Artosis. Um, he's not in bad shape. He can try to push out on the map here. Uh, the, pro the thing for Protoss is whenever the army gets knocked down to a number that low, it takes a little bit longer for them to have that sophistication in their army, mm -hmm. where Zerg has got so many hatches and larvae they can kind of remake, even if it's a smaller version of the same perfect army. It's still there. Yeah. Uh, but Patience, I think he's probably going to stay true to his name, try to stay back here. I don't know if Patience is aware of the bottom left base, by the way. I don't think he is. That like I wasn't even expecting that to be the next base. I thought like Symbol might expand upwards at this point, but you know that does oh, come that pretty close. That would have been close. interesting. Yeah, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. We haven't seen a lot of uh -oh. games go this long. But he sends Zots immediately there, and oh, that's going to really hurt Patience. And this isn't even connected by Creep, so there's not really a way to save this. Uh, he probably should click on top of this uh, this hatchery here instead of pursuing these uh, drones with the, the Zealots. But this is also kind of par for the course with what you were talking about, Ertos, is in the fact that like Patience isn't great with these little harassments, Yeah, but he still has a solid main army. So yeah, like overall, the overall strokes of how he plays are really great. Yep. But there are a ton of little weird things that go wrong all the time. So now, dude, this is a lot of lurkers yeah. here. Last I checked, photon cannons don't really counter lurkers, but we'll see. Well, they can yep, see no, them. They still you don't. Can, you can see how screwed you are. Yeah. So there's that, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're you know, right. sometimes That's... when you have like a bird or cloaked army, you're like, man, I'm getting wrecked, but I don't even know what's under there. Yeah, at least well, he knows. At least he knows. There's always that. That's a little bit of peace of mind. Okay. Um, not bad control there with the Hydras. A yeah. little Again, bit of though, globe trottery going on. The problem, really, though, whenever you're trying this, is Zerg is, like I said, you can't run away. Mm. Um, so you kind of just got to go balls to the wall. Oof. Oh, my God, he saved that hatchery. Look at that. Yeah, oh, that's, that's no. pretty painful for him. And now he's going to lose this Nexus as well. Well, that's mission accomplished right there. Yeah. But his army can flank here. Now, this army could counterattack for a ton of damage after he gets a kill here. Okay, that... Sends out three disruptor balls at once. Don't do that, guys. That's yeah, don't uh, try how to it goes down. They all kind of yeah. clump, and it's too fast. The Hydra is, if he can actually just take out more disruptors here, it's going to be uh, okay. Problem, actually, Symbol's like, he's not being, no pun intended, patient enough here. <laughs> he doesn't quite, ha he's, he's actually doing these pushes when he has the army the same size. And, like, in that case, yes, he got the Nexus. But he also, what, he, he was he's at, like, 50 supply deficit to his opponent. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird how it looks with that. But you know what? He's moving down now. This is a pretty strong army that Patience still has. Going to be able to easily pick up this hatchery. Did, um, he sniped the bottom left as well. Did Patience mine out the third base? And not almost. quite yet, but almost. It's, it's like a few close. patches. So hey, his econ get... is going way down right yep. now. But it's, it's again, it's pretty similar because he killed the fifth base of his opponent. Hey, great control there by Symbol. Mm. Um, now these Ling's hitting up over here. This is actually pretty big. Uh, he needs to get over here. These lurkers are about to hatch. He needs to throw these lurkers quickly. And he does have some zealots I over in that fourth base right now. And he might be able Patience. to just target this down. Yeah, I think Patience clinches the win here. Hmm. I think that's what he does. He has all the immortals. He has that uh, sophisticated army. Lurkers are not exactly great at, like, getting in the face of the army uh. and fighting. They're kind of good at holding that position back there. And I think that's going to be it. GG. Game number two goes to Patience, evening wow. out the series 1-1. All right. Uh, really interesting game. Kind of Patience showing what I've been saying about him, where it's like, yeah, okay, there's some miscontrols. Okay, this, this move is kind of weird and not doing anything. But at the end of the day, he makes really strong armies. He moves in the right areas. He does, like, a good harass, a like, decent harass, right? Yeah. Because Alex didn't kill the hatch, but he goes and gets it again. And yeah. eventually he has, like, the right units. Like, this guy is kind of a machine. No matter what you do to him, he carries on the path that he wants to do. Well, that was definitely a good showing there by Patience. Symbol looks strong, but if you just look at the supplies when the attacks are having, when do you see Zerg even on supply with his opponent? You know, do a lurker push and it pays off. They, they, mm. they, they, even if they take out an expansion, I mean, if you kill like eight lurkers, man, I mean, that's that's bad. Yeah, for no, Zerg. that's so much. It's like siege tanks, except they don't come out one at a time. You know, it's yeah. just it's a ton of money put in that army. So if you can crush that, you're generally going to be at a big advantage. Uh, game number three is going to be on the map, Dusk Towers. By the way, tell your friends to join us here. This is the GSL Code A, our first best of five tonight. It's tied up 1-1 with Symbol versus Patience. In the upper right, in the blue, our Zerg player, he is. Aprika Prixi, 
Simple. And let's not forget, guys, this player was actually a co <coughs> excuse me, this player was a Code S finalist. And a super regular. Yeah, he's old school. In the bottom left in the red, I'd say our new school player, newer school player. Yes, Thanks for coming sir. down, guys. Hope you're enjoying the show. Oh, they are tasteless. Oh, they are. You saw the smiles. Oh, my God, yeah. they are. That guy couldn't stop chewing his gum. <laughs> uh, so on this map, uh, Zerg have the option, Protoss do as well, to either expand outward or inward. There's a little backdoor nook expansion. Yeah. And we see Zerg taking the uh, exterior expansion here. Uh, but, you know, patience, knowing that just like belly buttons, expansions should be innies, will expand back there. Doesn't want to leave anything. What's your beef without any belly buttons? They're just not as good. Where do you keep your lint? That's <laughs> <laughs> that is a good pointer, Tosis. <laughs> Never thought of it that way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When you're a little kid, what does your mama tickle? She can't put her finger in your belly button. <laughs> I just feel like if you had an Audi, Audi belly button, it'd just get in the way of everything. You know what just I mean? Just rub up against your shirt and stuff. Yeah. It's like, what? You still want to have an umbilical cord, Tasteless? Come on. <laughs> My mom never cut the cord. Um, so, <laughs> we have the uh, we have the cybernetic score coming down now. By the way, good size audience here for Code A. Very exciting to see. Um, you know, a lot of oh, look, that's me. There's my there's my bad posture. You can see I'm actually cheating. I'm sitting down this time. Yeah. My the same guess was just for me. That's right. Uh, all right. Toast is actually, he casts on only one foot. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm kind of like a chicken or something like that. I'm yeah. a no, a flamingo. That's it. Where my other foot is like basically on my butt the whole time. I thought that most uh, birds actually did sleep on one foot. Is that not true? I think most birds probably sit down to sleep. Really? No, I don't think so. No, I think they mostly do. I think most birds, they bounce on one foot and they put the wing over their head. I think that maybe, like, some tall birds do, but I think that most birds probably sit in their butt. Someone tweet at us if you know a hell of a lot about Artosis birds. Artosis thinks they lay down in, in beds. No. <laughs> With pillows. I think they, 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 they nest. You know, they just wiggle down and sit down on the ground and or the nest. Well, you might be right. I don't know. Thing is, I, I mean... Definitely there's birds that sleep in both ways. I've personally seen birds sleep in both ways. Yeah. I just thought there was one that was more common than the other. We got an oracle again, by the way. Now, let's not forget, um, in the last game, the oracle harass was pretty lackluster. It was four kills, and then, you know, he backed backed off. Also, with the adepts, it was like one kill or something like that and, mm -hmm. and lost. Um, also, one thing about this map that makes it kind of uh, interesting, and usually it leads to the longest games we have out of all the maps, at least I think. Hmm. I think that's probably right. Um, yeah, yeah is that there's I would only say so. one point of uh, transfer, the left side of the map and the right side of the map. It's really just the middle area that allows you to cross that by ground. So yeah. sometimes we see these games turn into these crazy turtle games. I would love to they see just, that here. They just, yeah, I would love to see that as well, where they just mass up and try to make these games go like really, really long. And uh, here we see uh, actually aggressive usage of drones. Try to uh, minimize the damage done. Uh, now we have one, oh man, nicely done. Whoop. The oh, it's only the a couple in the main base So three there. drone kills so far. Yeah, it was good timely scouting there with the speed overlord by symbol. So blocking all this harassment very well. Uh, three adept warp in, that's kind of cool. This is not common. No, it's not. But I think that because it's not popular or common, uh, I think a lot of Zergs don't see it coming, and therefore, like, we see the Lings are actually out here trying to just get rid of this one uh, probe. These three Adepts could actually do a good amount yeah. of damage, man. I love this move, actually. This is brilliant, because after they kill that first Adept, especially if you let it die, the Lings go over and sit in front of Protoss base. Like, yeah, that's what they do. So the fact that he's got an Oracle and now six Adepts are about to be done, like, this actually has insane potential to deal with a lot of damage. And we have melee attack, banelings, uh, endlings coming into the game now. I'm you could send two adepts to every base, Tasteless. Look at how cool this is. I guess now, we just send six. That's no, fine, too. I liked, our, I liked your story better, Artosis. It's all right with this many lings there. It's better to stay in groups. Well, also, he's got the Oracle in a good spot where he can kind of mm -hmm. help out and take out a good number of these drones, even good control with these adepts, trying yeah. to pull the weaker ones back here. Wrecking that extractor with the Oracle. <laughs> uh, but more lings do come up. The Queen is under heavy fire right now. Looks like the Queen should go down. 
But uh, these Adepts, they've only killed six drones so far, seven now. He's starting to target down the remaining drones. Eight and uh, not nine. Eight kills total. Right. Eight that many lings Problem. and a queen? I like it. I think that was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, I wonder if we're going to see more of that. I think I think if Protoss has put that in the meta for too much longer, that would just get phased out immediately. Yeah, well, that's like someone something. will just if that if that actually happens like more than once, and people are going to just start sending you know linger over looking, looking for it and killing the adepts while yeah. they're down there. Like uh, he's already he, found it now. So now he did get that one void ray out here. So this seems to be the style of play that Patience wants to uh, hmm. to go for, assuming he's not going to be interrupted early on. Yeah, it's uh, kind of the same type that he went for before. Uh, you know, definitely you can go for like a, a blink disruptor play or even blink with some immortals. You need some force fields in there as well. But, uh, you know, I, I like where Symbol is going with this right now. He's trying to get some Baneling drops off. He's got the Evolution Chamber getting uh -oh, the plus one melee. Here we go. We got a drop. The probes are being pulled. And, oh, uh, oh wow. Wow, good tanking on that Zealot. Yeah, that was actually a great move to send that Zealot in there. But he's not done. Another bailing drop coming up here. Now, so Symbol being kind of greedy here. He really wants to just get everything on top of that. But the longer this is out, the less Drop the on the sentries. Get it. Sentries are trying to be tough. They're like, we're into here. Come at me, bro. Wow. wow. Really bad for Symbol there. Yeah. Bruising a sentry basically scores no points. <laughs> So really nicely done. I'm, I'm quite impressed. I think, to be frank, uh, Patience is going to have a pretty strong push coming up here. I'm yeah. not sure uh, if you've lost. What was that? That was a total of eight banelings that did nothing. Yeah, basically nothing at all. Like they killed a zealot. Some mining time loss or something. It's not worth it. Maybe for sure. somewhere in an endgame battle, a sentry will die like three seconds quicker yeah. than we would have <laughs> expected. But that's that's about it. Mm. Well, he's going for the spire right now, but the spire is not really the right tech. Uh, you know, if, yeah. if basically patience should be dropping the hammer coming up here. He's going to have plus two. His blank is finishing up. Uh, he's got a really strong army, and there, there's not going to be a better time for him to push out and pressure. And mutas are not going to do anything against the actual army itself. So his lings and banes are going to have to do all the work. Okay. Um, now, is he pushing out too quickly? Because there's so many uh, banelings up here. You know, a lot of Zerg players don't get this many banelings just like that mm -hmm. after an attack like that. So this may uh, throw him off. However... Uh, if he has the right force fields up here, the bailings aren't going to connect. He's going to have yeah. to rely on the drops, actually, as we see yeah, and uh, of course, coming this way. Stalkers can uh, do a lot against those as well. Okay, here we go. The force fields start to go up. Good force field so far, but here come those drops you were talking about, Tasteless. Okay, he's dropping them. Uh, not exactly the connections he needed, though. Yeah. Um, and there's still a good number of these behind here. It looks like he actually wants to go up the ramp. Uh, if he gets one sentry here, he can actually uh, uh, force field this. The Adept no, Warpin no is Excuse so me. strong, though, and that's yeah, going to really help him to clear up these lanes. Wow. Nicely done. Good good attack there. That was a very, very sharp attack there by uh, by Patience. And yeah, I love what we saw that. good there play, really, from both sides. It's just it, with all those Baneling drops getting completely dodged and the fact that Symbol had chosen to go Spire instead of, like, let's say, a Hydralisk den there. Yeah. He had to get some connections it, better than what we saw. All right, now going into game number four. Patience riding that comeback train. Simple looking a little apprehensive. Let's not forget Simple one with a, a wonky build. It was yeah. hard to keep track of. Yeah. And, um, you know, it threw Patience off, but it seems like if we're playing head to head here, you know, you play the standard Zerg in the meta, I play the standard Protoss. Patience seems to have a little bit more muscle, yeah. a little bit better. Yeah. Not the best execution. I mean, what you said earlier, Artosis, is very true. Patience like doesn't quite harass well. Yeah. He doesn't. He seems to kind of flub a lot of a lot of little micro yeah. moves here. But then when he comes out with his army, he hasn't missed a beat. He's got the upgrades. Yeah, he has yeah. the right composition. His and flow of build orders fields. and stuff is really really strong. So he's he's a force. Later you get into the game. This is game number four. Symbol against Patience here in tonight's GSL Code. In the bottom right, in the blue, our Zerk player, he needs to turn this series around. Africa Prixi, symbol. And in the bottom left, in the red, winning our last two games. Africa Prixi, Heijansu.
All righty. See what Symbol's got here. Definitely the series overall looking patience favored, as you said. Symbol only winning on kind of the, the weirder map with the gold base build, kind of tore patience apart there. S Symbol actually looked much worse in uh, in game three. Mm. You know, if you're going to baneling drop every time, if the player's good and is adapting, and this is Kode, so they should be pretty adaptable, uh, the drops should be doing less every single time. You know what I'm saying? Huh. I, I would definitely agree with you on that. And Dust Towers is such a comfortable map. Like, every angle that Baneling drops can come in from, you are you have defended like a million times by yeah. this point. Dust Towers is our oldest, well, not technically our oldest, but in, <laughs> in like Sea of the Void, our oldest map. Yeah. Uh, that we're still using here, other than, of course, Frost and King Sejong, <laughs> which were made years ago. But King Sejong is retro, man. Yeah. Bringing it back. Frost, I believe, is even older. Frost was like... Is it? I thought King Sejong that was, was older. This was in the same map pool that Deer went off of, if I recall correctly. I think you're right about that. In fact, that. I remember a game Are between you sure? Sue I thought, and Zest. I thought Zest. King Sejong was older, though. King Sejong's old, man. Mm. That's an old-ass yeah, map. They, both of them are really old, but... Like, was Sue King Zest... That was was Kings and Wings or, or in Heart of the Swarm? Oh, that was definitely Heart of the Swarm. Was yeah. it Heart of the Swarm? For oh, sure? it was definitely Heart of the Swarm. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, Taste from Shade. Taste is even cast this game. I'm like, yeah, every week. I'm not sure why I don't know that, but uh, gosh, I, I don't know. For me, I always feel like that's like the classic StarCraft it, map. I think it is the classic StarCraft two map, but yeah, I think Frost could be older. I don't know. People tweet at us. Tassels and Artosis on Twitter. Tassels and Art and Artie McFly <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Now there's Stargate opening. Yep, I think it's going to be another Oracle. Patience strikes me as that guy that's on the ladder that does the same build every time, but he's just yeah. really good at it. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. <laughs> and uh, it makes sense too. And the Oracle makes sense as well because you have to babysit Phoenixes a lot more. Uh, so like, I think there's more chances for him to miss micro there than with an Oracle. No, no, he goes Phoenix, all right. And, uh, you know, just the same stuff here for Symbol. Wants to scout ASAP. What's going on? So. Okay. Phoenix Tech it is. Looks like he's going to immediately send this out and try to catch an Overlord. Now, you should probably not be doing Baneling drops against the player who's going to go Phoenixes. Yeah, it gets pretty tough to pull that off. Even if they drop the Banelings, you can pick them up and kill them. So, and the Overlords, of course, just can't get away. Yeah. It, like, they normally can push you away as well, where it's yeah. super risky to even try. Well, I mean, it doesn't cost that much money to lose one, but it's it's not as good a strategy for sure against this. Well, the Adept not really getting that much intel, to be honest. All right, so we got, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Scouting Overlord coming out. Not uh, going in there just yet. No, oh, he's making a Drop Lord. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's he's like, see. He's like, all right, I think I've skirted the perimeter here in the perimeter Phoenixes. Well, if Symbol loses this game and this drop doesn't go well, I can't really feel bad for him. Yeah, well, it looks like he's going to drop those Lings out. The Phoenix is going to see go. this at the last second. And immediately going to try to target down this Overlord. Meanwhile, Lings over here at the front trying to attack in. Probe's being pulled. Looks like he gets one. Should get a second one mm. here. And, and uh, well, try to pull those Lings towards the pylon. Look how knowing this is. A lot of loss of mining time. Three probes already killed here. Wow, look at that surround there. Now he loses the Adept, but that's going to be the end of these links. Hmm. Now, I don't think he should drop again. Yeah, I, I think that I was about I, it. I think this is really ill-advised. I, I would agree with you on that, Tasteless. Uh, if he tries to drop again, it, it's a bigger and bigger chance that Patience A has like units around and B, yeah. his Phoenixes can find it. So. I like that he uh, he tried it, and uh, I mean, that was an okay drop. Sure, yeah. Well, we do have the Phoenixes going across the map. He does want to find out exactly what is up with Symbol. Is he going for something like a Hydralis Den, just Link Bane? Possibly some sort of Roach tech? Yeah, Probably let's not, see. Though. We uh, Well, I mean, I, I'm actually kind of expecting him to do the same thing. I mean, look, he's even in the melee attack now. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just going to go for, like, the exact... I think he's going to get a Spire later, too. Yeah. It's uh, it's all the rage right now. It, it's like you either go Ling Bane, Ling Bane Hydra, or Hydra Lurker. That's generally the the three strategies that are considered okay. And yeah, Symbol's a Roach guy. But sometimes you get mutas. I guess he wouldn't go mutas if there's Phoenixes out here. But yeah, yeah. he's gonna get some kind of uh, Baneling version of this. Mm. Now again, kind of staying consistent with what we've seen already. Uh, the adept usage is not optimal mm -hmm. uh, from patience. He's gonna come in here. 
um, do some modicum of scouting. Oh, this is cute, though. A little harass over here on the high ground. And yeah. that Adept is going to go down. Phoenix is back up. Now, these Adepts have shaded in over here. Two drone kills so far. Yeah, it looks like he does pull those away. I guess the one Phoenix bought some time for them to get in and do a little bit of damage. You got to think if uh, Patience was a little bit better with his harass, he'd be like a serious, like, high rank Kodas player. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. Look, he should have been in Kodas last season. He is without a doubt, like, not just top 32 in the world, but I would put him higher than that, like, top 20 ish. Like, he's really strong. He had a great SSL season. Uh, it's just like, the things he does wrong are a lot of the things that make people wow about StarCraft, and things he does right are things that are really hard to even notice. Because, like, you'll watch games of, of Patience, and anything of his that makes it into, like, a highlight reel will yeah. be someone out microing him, like, insanely, right? Or, like, a Baneling's killing too much. <laughs> so none of that goes his way, but the guy, like, has sick build orders, stays on point with his macro, and... You know, it, he knows when to move out. So I feel like he's just not in his final form yet. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And I mean, and anybody who's played enough StarCraft knows that, like, over time you begin to develop, to develop certain skill sets, and you yeah. kind of add that to your tools uh, that help you win. And I feel like he's definitely got some solid play. He just has to kind yeah. of uh, iron out a few more things in his style of play to kind of come through. Well, this is part of why I'm really excited about him as well, because he was on foreigner teams forever, like, when he actually joined a free guy, I was like, oh, God, that is the best pickup that a team can take right now because sure, yeah. this guy shows so much potential, hasn't been practicing in a proper Korean team house environment for the longest time, and is still doing well against top-tier Code S players. It, it also strikes me as somebody who's probably viewed as um, he's, he's underrated overall in Absolutely, Korea. Absolutely, you know? yeah, yeah. I think he's underrated just everywhere. Like He's actually a very strong player. Uh, we got the War Prism taking some damage here. Being pushed back, losing most of the shields there. Uh, can he box that in? I think he can. Well, yeah. that's out of the game now. Unless Protoss goes over here and saves that. <laughs> well, if he wants to keep Hydras there, I'd, I'd trade a Warp Prism for that much supply. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, want, I want to see Patience go in and bop that little group of Hydras. Just force field that bridge and yeah. eat up half of that. Well, still uh, scouting around quite a bit. Patience getting, uh, you know, quite an army underneath his belt. He has a lot of sentries right now. And now we have um, we have the fourth base being taken here for Symbol. On this map, fifth base is pretty hard to acquire, especially on this map, actually, mm. for Zerg. You're, you're really kind of going to a whole other part of the map. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's difficult to access. Uh, not the easiest thing for Protoss to get either, but you know it definitely you can feel it as you play the game. Mm. Now these zealots get warped in, and Symbol just cleans it up immediately. Nicely done there by Symbol. You yeah. know, again, it's it's the same story over and over again. It's patience. He hemorrhages a lot of units on the map, but we always got to wait and see how that big battle at the end is going to actually occur. Mm. Now look at this. We actually have a bunch of mutas on the way. Like he went for a Ling Bane Hydra, which forced this kind of like. Immortals, we have Psy Storm on the way. You know, we have Charge Upgrade already done in a lot of Zealots and a lot of Sentries in there. These aren't necessarily things that are very good against Mutas. Like, you either want Blink Stalkers or you want a bunch of Phoenixes. He does have four still. Oh. But. Patient sees these Mutas now. Mm -hmm. Surprises have to battle whenever you have Mutas out. Um, and we don't even have any more Phoenixes being made here. This may end up blind sighting Patience. Well, he's getting in there and getting some damage done right away. Three Stalkers really won't do very much here. Phoenixes are coming back, though, and that is where you actually will get a lot of value, but four of them that are already bruised, it's going to be hard to micro against that. No uh, no more Phoenixes still being made. He's uh, clearly okay huh. with Mutas being... I actually I thought we always would see Phoenixes. Yeah, I thought he'd make some started more. When you see it, but he's apparently fine with this. Now... It looks like Symbol's stopping Muta production, probably because he's mm. assuming that Phoenixes are coming into the game, but they're not. Yeah, you know what? Then that's that's like kind of a good mind game in a way when you mention it like yeah. that, Tasis, and it allows him to build even a stronger death wall because the Mutas don't actually help against the army now. He's got enough stalkers in there. He's he's got everything he needs. So yeah, once you have that critical number of stalkers, the Mutas are just no longer a threat, especially when we start to have Archons in play. Mm -hmm. Can't really float over an army and do a lot of damage. The Archons just melt it. 
Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And now well, a bunch of these getting caught push. before Blink is done. Oh, that is that is really bad. That's a shame right there. <laughs> this is a 177 supply to 140 right now. Uh, this third base is probably going to get shut down. No, I spoke too soon. Excuse me. He's coming back around here. Mute is coming, though, again. But try to get some of these probes. He's He'll way out multitasking patience right now. Yeah. Well, this is a, you know, a good sign of why Symbol was such a strong player, especially a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he catches all the Phoenixes too, Tasteless. Oh, my God. Only one makes it out. He's killed 15 probes, a bunch of the Stalkers as well. I think a Patience has to go for it. Yeah. There's 15 Lurkers on the way. So as those morph in... This composition becomes harder and harder to break for the ground army, which pa which had a big advantage in ground versus ground. Patience almost seemed to just ignore entirely the army here yeah. of his opponent. He was just kind of, you know, it's whatever. I'm, I'm not even. This guy don't need to defend against mutas, and then they kill everything. It's yeah. Like, oh, okay. All right, here we come. The lurkers now. He's gonna need to force field those back. Now, I think with this kind of art, oh. it's gonna be tricky yeah. to get down here with these lurkers. I think Everything even is going to die if he goes down yeah. that ramp. Wow. Even the power overwhelming cheat would not make you live through that. No way. No way. <laughs> not down that ramp. Look at this army now for Symbol. It's so scary. Like, when he didn't make Phoenixes, I'm like, okay, he'll hit a really strong attack yeah. and abuse the fact that Symbol spent so much money on Mutas. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! That was. What? Uh, How many Mutas was that? He sacrificed Seven all the Mutas, mutas. and he mutas. got like a sentry and two High Templars. I don't even Sick know, move. man. What? <laughs> well, that, I guess we have to, again, reevaluate this game after that because mm. that is pretty bad. Without the mutas, all Protoss has to do is try to keep this army at bay, yeah. which is, like, pretty damn doable. Yeah. He's already got zealots yeah. out on the map. Look, yeah, there's a lot of lurkers, sure, but Patience knows how to do this. He just, well, he's going to come in and try to snipe something. Little bit sloppy right there. you got to kind of make them burrow and unburrow oh a whole bunch. Oh, my God. Symbol. This is bad. <laughs> this is just horrible. Uh, now Symbol's going to be losing drones up here. Symbol kind of seems like uh, one of those great MMA fighters that went back into the ring like 20 years later and had mm. bad knees. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ever see that movie, The Wrestler? Yeah. Fantastic oh, movie, fantastic, guys. Go watch brilliant it. Brilliant movie. Yeah, yeah, no, I've seen it. It's, it's wonderful. Mickey Rourke or whatever, he's a great actor. Yeah. Well, he's the wrestler in this right now. They're like, man, your heart yeah. can't take this, you know? Yeah. He's like, uh, one more. One more time. One more attack with these mutas. <laughs> it's like, no, not that especially. <laughs> like, you killed all the Let phoenixes even. What are you doing? Him. Now, um, you know, he kind of got some value out of those uh Templar, even though they were misplaced. Mm. Now remember, with Templar, uh, Hydra's down on creep. You got to be careful when you try to run away. Um, well, this is kind of this what? is okay. I think we've almost got checkmate here. <gasps> oh, those wow. banelings are so low. They are so. He low. actually should not be even going in there with that. I'm losing kind of has how many banelings are just not connecting. Now, right now, Symbol is just trying to shove. Mm -hmm. He is trying to just go in there. And, and, and do some kind of quick death blow. I think Symbol actually saved the hatch, by the way, uh, the one that was uh, close, did he? close oh, to the Oh, you're right. Top. Yeah, he did. But no, not this one. This one dies, but that yeah. one, 27 uh, drones killed. Because it's so hard to split up a lurker-based army to deal with Protoss in two locations. So Is he does a, have a little bit burrowed here. But I don't think he's got an obs with this army, by the way. No, he doesn't. Now, uh, okay, hold up, hold up. 93 supply to 122. Uh, Protoss, I think, does not have a mining base if he loses the bottom. Look, this one lurker has dealt, like, thousands of damage to these stalkers. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he didn't go up. Yeah, he could have just walked up, but his multitasking is not okay. really doing it. <laughs> Problem is, I don't know if anybody's mining here. I mean, we have 14 yeah. workers for Zerg. We have 20 probes for Protoss. Both their economies are completely wrecked. Problem is, oh. lur lurkers are pretty tricky to actually try to move around with. Oh, my God! Great kills. This is like such a down and dirty game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every unit, every Zergling, every Hydra, every Stalker, every Immortal, every Archon counts. Yeah, it's it, very important to kind of really look at this like it's only a few more pieces on the chessboard. Uh, We're an actual chess where you can't really make pieces. Mm, this is this is really bad for Symbol at this point, though. Yeah, it looks like he just cheated. Symbol taps out. His army was just a bit too yeah. small. Well, lurkers. the problem with lurkers against uh, Protoss army when you both don't have a lot of drones and you both don't have uh, big big armies. Lurkers, you can't actually do that much with. Yeah, no, you definitely can't. Like you need other units with them. It's like siege tanks. You can't do anything with just siege tanks. Nor with lurkers. Nor with brood lords. Or yeah. with colossus. All these units. Or just disruptors. Need, you, yeah. you need that backup there. All that stuff is like you better have. 
something else there to help it out because it will just die alone. But look, I think uh, Simple pulled together a pretty good game there and then kind of wasted his mutas. That was kind of weird. And uh, maybe a, it was good that Patience was out in the map counter harassing when that big push came because if he wasn't, he was not going to win. Yeah, um, <laughs> that guy with a soju bottle. Um, ah, sick. Yeah, he like saw he was on camera and then it like just goes down a little bit shot. Um, that was kind of weird at the end there. Symbol looked like he was doing fine, but I mean, you lose 17 mutas. Mm. That's so much gas. They could have been and doing so much. He killed three of the, the four Phoenixes. And yeah. I mean, he'd already seen that he had no interest in making more Phoenixes. So yeah. like, the mutas could have been worth more. I think he was just trying to snipe all the spellcasters so that he could just win the game right there.